like a greener planet means a fairer planet means less migration. Do you know, they've already discovered a way to power mopeds on onions. But the government, they don't want us to know. Ha! Well, hear this, Cameron. Four years, I'll be off the national grid. Right? Already started. Ask me how I power my alarm clock. Go on. Onions. Three for two. Tesco. I haven't quite got the uh, hang of the soil yet, so uh, meanwhile I have to uh, hop down the supermarket. Well, of course, they're bloody good at DIY and whatnot. Uh, our family has a long history of employing foreigners and um, and selling them. A bit of a murky chapter in our past, but uh, you know I concur with the current government. As long as they make a valid contribution, then let them have a stab. We've always got a, a lawn that needs mowing, or a, a mucky dirty horse. Yeah, but uh, of course, if they if they turn out to be thieves or gang stars, then uh, well, it's uh, yeah, open season. <laughs> Far it will, I say. If I had my way, I'd march down Dover and build a bloody fence around Britain. What? Right? Trouble is, they probably employed a bleeding Polish to put it up. My nephew, Steve, went on one of them stag dudes last year. He got the ferry back from Calais. They only found a bleeding check clunk at the bottom of his punto. And what are they gonna do, eh? Give him a bleeding job, cast in the bathroom or something. Meanwhile, my nephew, oh, he's all depressed, isn't he? With his timber yard folded. Where's the justice in that, eh? Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses. It shouldn't be a burden, but a duty. Only the other week I had a delightful Syrian boy seeking refuge in the church. He was a tired, huddled mass. I'd have let him stay, but of course the authorities, well, if they'd gotten wind of the fact that I was harbouring an immigrant, well, they'd toss me in jail. Hmm. Anyway, poor Ahmed. Oh, he did rather honk. So I let him have a bath in the vicarage and then I sent him on his weary way. A quick scrub down with Mr. Muscle and you'd never know he'd been. <laughs> My nephew, Steve, tells me they speak something like 30,000 different languages in British schools. Well, I only speak one. Common bloody sense. It's like taking a trip to Bombay when I drop the kids off at school. I'm not being racist, but they're serving them African food. Honestly, you know, my kids should be eating proper food like beans and burgers. Do you know what I mean? If we want a curry and chips, we'll go to Mr. Khan's up the road. British curry for British people. None of this Turkish muck. I never had an education, no. I, I, I learned everything I need to survive from nature. Well, you, ask, you ask children today uh, what the difference between a, a mushroom and a toadstool is, and what do you think they'll say? Eh? They'll gawp at you like you're a bloody twat. Happens to me all the time. Well, mock all you like, you clever cock. I, I'd like to see what happens when, 
when you're lost in the wild and you try and start a fire with your iPhone. <laughs> I bet they don't have an app for that. <laughs> and then what happens with the battery dies, eh? You're screwed. Ah, but if you know how to harvest the juice of an onion, they don't teach that at school, do they? They don't teach that at school. <laughs> Well, I, I don't condone corporal punishment. Yeah, I, I, I absolutely insist upon it. If I stepped out of line at school, I'd be placed on the tee and given a bloody good whack with the nine iron. You know, the trouble with today's education is that it's uh, it's all a bit um, poofy. You know, I, 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 if you were given a pat on the back and told that you're wonderful just because you grasp the notion of a semicolon, well, then you deserve to have trouble getting employment. You know, I didn't get such a highly paid job because I was adequate at English lit, you know? You know I, 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 I was tenacious and ambitious, and eventually, Daddy gave me a job at the company. Nick Clegg reneged, let us not forget. As a result, there is a generation of impoverished students who can barely afford a sausage, let alone finance a degree. The veterans of public school have once again stifled the underclass. My advice to students is pray. Never underestimate the power of prayer in combating the stress of penury. As a student, I was regularly teetering on the precipice of my overdraft, but a quick two minutes on my knees, and as if by magic, there'd be ten, twenty pounds in my pocket. Solid brownie. They're taking all our welfare. I had to claim disability allowance, right? After I fell down a drain at work. I can't walk straight no more. We have to slash your allowance, they say. <laughs> oh, yeah. I wonder why that is, eh? My mum's disabled too. She has a problem with food. Makes her heavy, you know. She broke the bog last week. I mean, how's she meant to pay for a new one, eh? How's she meant to pay for a new one if she can't get any allowance, I ask you. I'll tell you what the answer is. Stop clogging up the system with foreign bodies. Don't you, Mum? Not you. Oh, we're all vulnerable, you know. We're all at the mercy of the universe. But it is a crime to willfully deprive desperate people of welfare, you know. I mean, I'm alright, I'm lucky. i got a third eye. I can see into the future. How? The zodiac, the stars, they're all out there showing me the way. Yeah. Now, for instance, I already know what the coming year has in store. Yeah. So it's going to be a quiet one. I got made redundant last month. Well, I didn't see that one coming, eh? George Osborne was a guest uh, last month. Uh, we put him in the big game room uh, in the shadow of Daddy's African elephant. Um, his proboscis almost touches the floor. The elephants, not not the chancellors. Uh, welfare is about looking after one another, isn't it? You know, helping out when the 
going gets tough. Uh, that's why George has personally assured us that uh, the spectre of austerity shan't be haunting the corridors of Barkshaft Farm any time soon. <laughs> it puts one's mind at ease, you know. Labour has always been very, very strong on welfare. I've been organising a food bank here at the church for the past three years. But there's nothing I like more than rolling up my sleeves and getting my fingers sticky. You name it. Fondant fancies, Battenberg, the most divine banana cake. <laughs> you know, I hereby invite you, Mr. Cameron, to come down here and witness the suffering that goes on as a result of your inhumane cuts. Perhaps you'd even be touched a little bit. Nothing moves me more than the look on people's faces when I feed them one of my gooey brownies. The invite's there, Mr. Cameron. Overpopulation. I read it on Twitter. If this country gets any heavier, we're gonna sink. They're letting anyone in now. It's not racism, it's realism. Right? If we don't do something about the problem, this country's going down like a sack of turd in a fish tank. Well, UKIP is the filter in that fish tank, sieving out all the shit. At the end of the day, it boils down to one thing. British jobs for British people. British welfare for British gripples and British plasters for British walls. Globalisation oughtn't to be a dirty word, you know? Poverty, on the other hand. I mean, how, how else are we supposed to leap into the future if we don't embrace the principles of capitalism? The free market is like the Wild West. And, and as with the gunslingers of yore, we must ride into town and proclaim, this is my town now, and if you have a problem with that, then I'm going to shoot you in your face. You know? And that's how, that's how we get ahead in the world. By shooting people in the face. Compassion, tolerance, and understanding are key in bringing us closer together. The future of civilization is dependent on how willing we are to surrender ourselves to love. Jesus, much like Ed Miliband does now, understood that life is a struggle. So much so that he was willing to have himself nailed to a cross for the good of mankind. I know that Eddie won't let his supporters down. <laughs> and Brownie? Holes in the ozone, melting ice caps, and greenhouse gases choking up the planet. If we don't start making a move to be self-sufficient, then we may as well stare the apocalypse in the face and say, go on, smack me. Smack me stupid, because that's what I deserve. You know? <laughs> do you think <laughs> that Mother Nature gives a toss what we do to her? You know? The moment she feels under threat, she's going to whip down her knickers and plop all over us. Hurricanes, earthquakes, tsunamis, you name it. Yeah. But if we if we love her, if we respect her, if we feed her and nurture her, well, she'll yield her gifts to us. Like the trees, you know? The sunshine. Onions. 